Hi, and welcome to the ICA community. In this video, we're going to demonstrate how you can upload documents straight to the ALJ division. From the front page of the ICA community, you'll need to have a, lo a login user and go ahead and log into the portal. If you don't have a login, please review one of our other videos in order to see how to request access. So from the login page, it saved my user ID and password. You go ahead and enter those in and select login. This will take you to the front page of the ICA community. And one of the menu options is upload documents. This allows you to upload documents straight to the ALJ case file. So from upload documents, there's four options. The first is the ability to upload workers' compensation claims documents, so documents to the claim. The second is the ALJ case document filing to upload documents straight to an active litigation file. The third are direct filings to the chief ALJ. And the fourth is non-workers' compensation ALJ filing. So I'm going to start here and select ALJ case document filing. So with the new system, every outbound document that goes from the ICA will have an ALJ case number and the ICA claim number. These are two important numbers in order to have the documents that are submitted either through paper, fax, hand-delivered, or through the portal. It would be very beneficial to have those numbers on your document so that documents can be uploaded straight to the case and there's no delay. So from here, we do require the ALJ case number. So as I enter that in here, it will also default in the claim number if it is valid. As you can see, there's a validation that says no claim or ALJ case records can be found. So then I'm gonna to have to go back and I'm going to go ahead and enter it in a, a valid case number. And you'll know it'll be a valid case number if the claim number is populated for you. From there, you will go ahead and you will see a listing of doc types that you'll want to select. You have the ability to do an attorney withdrawal, correspondence, documentary evidence, letter of retention, request for review, subpoena request. For anyone who is on the current pilot for active litigation files, these document types should be very familiar since they are straight from the current cover sheet. So you go ahead and select, I think for my example, I'm going to do a subpoena request. Select the doc type, and then you would navigate to your desktop in order to, or to your workstation, uh, um, in order to find the document that you want to upload. So I'm going to go here and select my subpoena request, select open. The portal will show a progress bar and show that the upload files are completed with a green check mark. I'm going to go ahead and hit select done and hopefully it will provide me a success page. That's how easy it is to submit a document straight to an ALJ case. Within minutes, that document will be added to that case file so that the judges and support staff can view, and it also will be viewable within this View ALJ Active Litigation File feature that's on the portal. For direct filings to the Chief ALJ, you would select that in the menu option. For direct filings, if there is a claim number associated, we would like you to enter in this claim number, and then there are specific document types that are only for direct filings to the Chief ALJ. So you go ahead, pick the appropriate document type, again, navigate to the files in your directory, and go ahead and upload. For non-workers' compensation files, it has its own set of document types as well. This is for labor, civil penalties, or requests for binding arbitration. So again, you just select the doc type, navigate to your file, hit upload, and all of these documents will either be added to an existing case or would create a new case, depending on what doc type you pick. So that's how you can upload documents straight to the ALJ division. I hope this makes your process even more efficient than it is today. Thank you very much. Have a good day.